So we're going to take this cube and put it down here. Put that one there. That one can go there. Hello. So today I'm going to show you how to do a simple object grab using a physics handle. And this is a very simple thing because there's a built-in node for it and it's actually pretty good and not bad. The catch is it only works with objects that are simulating physics which is a bit of a problem in some cases because your objects may just be a regular actor that's not simulating physics so for example a knife in a drawer or a ball on the ground or something like that something that is probably just part of the landscape most of the time until you actually go up and do something with it other examples are things like a jerry can or a brick on the ground. Now, there's no shortage of examples, but that's what you're going to have. But what we're going to do is we're going to we've got the first person character template loaded. Not too special. What we're going to do is we're going to fire up a line trace. line trace by channel and we're going to create the usual suspects coming off it so get world location get forward vector and we're just going to do, do the usual you know the, the add and the multiply if you want to know what these are actually for, there are many, many, many YouTube videos that are that cover this topic already. I can't really go through it every single time, so we're not going to. But uh, yeah, generally what this does, in a nutshell, is this, what comes out of here is a position that's forward in front of you by whatever you plug into here. So if we say 400, it's 400 centimeters in front of the in front of the player or in front of the camera, wherever the camera happens to be looking. That's it. That's all it does. There's, there's nothing special about it at all. So moving on, we're going to set trace complex and we go for one frame only. So that's part of what we need there. Now we're hitting an object. We're looking through our camera. We're hitting, we're hitting this, for example. But what would be the difference between that and, say, this wall or a cube on the ground? We need to test to see if it's, if it's a static or mesh like that. Because if you look in here, this is just a static mesh actor. It actually says it here. Static mesh actor. So we need to be able to discern between that, so an object that runs physics and one that doesn't, and then we need to do two separate things. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this up. We actually don't need to split that up. We do this every time. What we need to do is we need to promote this to a variable. We only really want to promote it to a variable for hitting something. So let's put branch in there. And we're going to go to that. So that, that part's done. We've, we've done our thing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to leave this alone for a minute. Now our button that's going to trigger this, we're going to use the left mouse pad, the, the left mouse button. which is, we're just going to take it straight. We're not going to make an input thing or anything like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, we've clicked. We now need to see what we're clicking on. So we're going to get our out hit actor, or out hit variable there that's been done. And we're going to take the out hit actor and we're going to look at is, oops, wrong one. We're going to take the out hit component is simulating physics. 
Now, what we can then do is do a branch off it. Branch. Now, if it's simulating physics, we want to basically grab it. There is a node that actually does this. Under physics handle, grab, com grab component at location. So that's the one we need. And then we take the out hit component and we just shove it into that. Now, there's a couple of problems. One of them is that we need to actually give it a grab location. So what we can do is we can get the out hit actor, get location, and get back the context, get actor location, and we can just plug that in straight there. Now this is only useful for one frame. It's, it'll give it a bit of a jump. And there, there are ways to solve that, and I might go into it a little bit later. In fact, I, I probably will. You, you essentially just get the distance between that and yourself or and the and the and the, uh, and the object you're hitting and then you simply just put that into a variable which you then feed into this which is pretty easy and you've even got it's actually really easy to do so and we'll, we'll do that later so if it's simulating physics, grab location because the physics handle bit will actually work, which we actually need one. Physics handle. Grab that. And we're just going to plug that in there. So this part's now done, this bit. This difficult-ish bit. That's done. So now what we need to do... And yeah, people with some degree of OCD are going to get annoyed because I'm about to cross these over. Now, if we're not simulating physics, we need another way to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an actor reference. Grabbed actor. So we're just going to pop this. We're just going to grab that. Actor reference. Just want to make sure I've actually selected actor reference. So actor object reference. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it up here. I'm going to set it. What we're going to do is we're going to put that up here, and then do that. And this is now our grabbed actor. What we also want to do is add another variable which can be a boolean. Bool, we call it. Rename that to grabbing. I'm just going to set that to true. Either way, doesn't matter which side it goes, this needs to be set anyway, so you just stick them in the same thing. And that's pretty much what you need to do for your left mouse button there. Well, for the grabbing part anyway. What we can also do... Actually, we don't need to... We need to uh, be a little bit more diplomatic here. Rename grabbing... static actor and we need to do grabbing bhy this should make it a bit easier the other way so what we're going to do now so grabbing static actor there you go Grabbing physics actor. Pretty straightforward. We're going to come up here. 
I'm gonna do two gets, get, get, whoops, get. So if either of these two are true, we're just gonna use an, uh, actually no, we'll just do it off two branches, one after the other. It's messy, I know, but we could probably use, a, use the, um, case but yeah. so here we go so if we grab the static actor what we want to do is we want to take said static actor and we want to just set its location set actor location which will be up here and we want to use this value here which is the end of the line trace so we're just going to plug that in up there. So that's that part. Now, if we're using a physics actor, just like here, what we actually want to do is just take the physics handle, and then we want to do set target location and rotation. And we set that to true. So yeah, we set that off true, and our location can actually be the same, that one. So either object, whether it's a static mesh in a in a static mesh actor, or whether it's a grabbing, you know, whether it's a physics, you know, one with physics enabled, both should now move. So we'll just go here. There we go. I just wasn't far enough away. So there's that. Now we should actually we may have to just add one really really quickly. Let's just add an actor. Uh, static actor. Just add the cube. So we don't actually have to do anything to the cube. We're just going to plonk the cube there. We should be able to go up to the cube. Here we go. Whoops, I hit the gun. So, yeah, there we go. We've now got static mesh being moved around. We just need to do the clearing part. So already it's actually looking reasonable. And we've got it working with both the static meshes and the normal actors. So what we need to do is take it off this. And we need to clear them. So we just do two branches. Now, if we're grabbing a static actor, we want to set it to nothing. And it'll just stop moving it. That's right. I need to work if we're holding it down. So there we go. Right. So we're holding it down. There you go. Of course, we'll do the same thing for the other side. So if it's a physics actor, we get a physics handle, and we simply release. Pretty straightforward. 
and of course we want to clear this as well. So we should be able to, by holding down the mouse button, Yeah, we've got it working with with both of these quite comfortably-ish. Now, the distance thing. So what we can do here this is what nobody else will show you what to do. We're going to take this value here. See, it's currently set hard set to 400. Now, what we really want to do is we don't want to get that jump that we get. So if we're far away from here, like we can't grab it, we can't do anything. Get nice and close. See that, how it jumps and goes forward? It's annoying. It's just silly and it's annoying. So what we're going to do... Oh, and it's also only setting this if it's actually hitting an object. We could actually just take that out. Actually, what we can do is we can plug the false into the branch, and that way when we back up from the object, so this is where we're going to get a bit more in-depth. So now that we go back, we can now tow it. So if we don't move the mouse, it'll just do it because we're not triggering a line trace anymore. Whoops. I've, I've lost a cube. Anyway. So yeah. So what we need to do is we need to get the distance when we grab the object from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, we're going to create a float. We're going to call it Grab dist. We're going to set it somewhere here. We're just going to set it here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the. Where is that? Hey guys. We don't want to drag lines all over the place. Let's just get that. First person character. Get location. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a distance. We want... That one. And what we're going to do is just going to literally just plug that straight in and we're just going to do this get actor location plug it in there and now we shouldn't really see anything too dramatic uh, grab distance get grab distance that's going to be there now that what we do is we take our grab distance and we're just going to set it to something stupid like 3000 and here, when we reset, we need to set this back to 3000 here as well. Otherwise, we're just going to get stuck with a really short, like, it's never, it's not really, it's going to be the same as the previous one. So, that's what we do there. So, what we should be able to do, see how it's nice and long, so we can go from here, we can grab it. You see how it doesn't jump? At all. Huh. 
<laughs> can even grab the gun. And move it out of the way. So yeah. So that's a good bit of fun there. What else do we want to do? We got we can do a few other things with this. But uh yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not a terrible lot else we can do to it. We could also, off this, run that into that value there, and that'll help us with when we're moving around, for example. So... If I don't move the mouse, we're going backwards, so we're not actually... That makes things a little smoother. We've also got the rotation. Let's see if we can solve that. Should be... That should be right there. How much road... How much is it actually rotating when we pick objects up? It's not really rotating. If you, yeah. And if you cause a collision. Yeah, so that's physics handles the expanded version. And also how you deal with static meshes. I mean, uh, static meshes and, and uh, actors. Well, mostly the actor. Uh, but yeah.